Hello, hello. This is Johannes Watri from Hold to Run. Today we'll take a look how you can decipher and cipher any file. As you can see in here, we have cipher function in stream to outstream to encrypt a file with the user's password, which he has used to create and start this PPSafe application to begin with. And then a reverse function to get that encrypted file back to usable format. For instance, when the user ha wants to view it or use it again. Let's take a look into the PPSafe application, which we're going to use as a demo. Here, user has already created three files. Video file, we are deciphering it, it opens and we can view it. Same with the PD file, PDF file, and we can use it again. And an image file. Good. Now, before we start and jump into the coding, let's make a quick tour of what I do. You can go into holdtorun.com and take a look at the applications that I have released. And in here you can see a short demo video of the PPSafe or you can go directly into Google Play and test it out. Okay, let's start. Okay, now I, I will walk you through what happens in the application and how it reflects into the ciphering the file. So let's log in with the user password. This is the secret that only the user knows. It's not available to anyone else. When he logs in, it is safely stored into an encrypted space, into the local memory of the phone. So now that we know we have to know the password within the application otherwise this just doesn't work the user is not going to be able to re-log in either or access his ciphered files if it's not safely secured in the application so that's the uh, principle in here principle of any cipher function but now we're going to create new ciphered file through camera. We could do it through adding any local image, but let's create new file. So we take a photo in here and the camera will return a local cache file uh, through file URI. So the camera ha pretty much has to save a file into a certain space as a usable file so we can access that. Okay, so we get that through URI. So that's the uh, location where it resides. Just to be secure, we'll always delete those files once this ciphering is, in, is done, so we don't keep any unused cast files for nothing. Okay. And like I told you, we have to know the password. So when we call the cipher function, we also receive the user password from the encrypted storage into the runtime code. And as a third parameter, we have to assign new file, which we have already created into the local space of the application, which only this application can access where we will write the ciphered file content for our uh, later return to use that file. For instance, here we open it. We had to call this file deciphered through decipher in stream to outstream to view it again. Okay. So what is happening in here? The camera returned us a file and it told us that I saved it into that place and now we have the URI. So that is the location. 
Okay, before we start ciphering this content into this file, we have to initiate our cipher function. So the first is to create a secret key with the password. So this is something that is very well established through Java cipher classes. So what we do pretty much in here is we create a digest for SHA-256 ciphering and we get the bytes from the password and then we update the digest with the bytes of that password and we digest a key which we can then return as a secret key spec for our AES encryption. Okay. Let's go back to the uh, cipher function. Now we have a key. Then we will need a cipher class. Okay, we'll get it through the Java cipher class instance. And we do want to create AES ciphering. So another parameter which has to be used, you can see the small AES and we'll be using AES, CBC, PKC, S5 padding parameters for our cipher instance. Then we will create our IV byte array with our cipher instance and create the IV parameter spec with the IV byte array. And finally, we initialize our cipher method with those parameters. Okay, now we have specification and a class, cipher class, to be used to cipher our content into this file, which is locally residing in the application memory, in the phone. So this is pretty standard, then what happens is, because we want to be able to handle any size of files, we'll do that through in stream, writing in stream of that camera file content into out stream. So we have to now open the in stream from the camera file. And we can do that through the URI. We can always open input stream from URI. And then we will use the Java class cipher output stream. And we create file output stream from that file that we are about to write the cipher content into. And then we start copying that content into that output stream. And finally, we close the in stream and out stream. And now we have done it. And do know that as we are using cipher output stream, we have to pass in our cipher instance. So it knows what specifications and cipherings and password it'll use for the algorithm. So this will auto automate your cipher function when you create ciphered files. And finally, of course, you want to be able to return into your ciphered class later on. Therefore, if this is a success, we will return content URI of that file, which we can then save into our database or file items to be used when we want to later on view that item. As in here, when I open it, we are actually using this content and deciphering it back to usable content in here. Pretty cool. Okay, so now we want to observe the restoring of a data backups from our media files and our master backup file. And uh, each file, media file, those attachments to get back access into those will be recapping after the observation how we managed to uh, process those through this deciphering function. So 
For this observation, I have totally wiped this app memory and logged in again with the same password that the user initially created those ciphered files and master backup. Quickly, we need to jump into our Google Drive because that's what I like to keep as my uh, backup content location. So we have a backup file, one of them, the test one is still processing upload, so let it be, but we have another backup in here and we can prove that any content is ciphered. So this is gibberish, totally something that algorithms cannot process without your password. Okay. And then we uploaded media files of images, PDF and videos into as a backups into Google Drive. So here are many files and there should be a file from timestamp 521. So let's try to open that image. We are not able to process it by any means. It's ciphered. So these are safe. At least we can consider so if somebody gets access into our private drive. Now we have our PPSafe application and we want to restore our content. First, we use our master backup to restore the main content we are deciphering the primitive data that the file had. Through that, we are able to again index what belonged into what item. And it should pretty soon note, note us that, hey, you have cloud backup files available. So let's give it a sec before we can restore these through our decipher in stream to outstream. Good here. Now we'll make a download for all of our backups. Each file that we are receiving from the cloud is being processed through this deciphering and we will recap the process pretty soon. It's kind of a reversed cipher function. So here you can see PDF image and our video file which soon is ready there. And we're able to access these again. Nice. Okay. So let's recap the code. So we had secret files ciphered in our cloud and we just downloaded and start using them again. So the user had to log in with his initial password to use those files again or to access the main backup again, again, of course. So the application has to be able to access that. That's a fact. So we retrieve the user password from a safe location, a encrypted location. Then we have again URI for those encrypted files, which is pretty much downloaded each file from Google Drive into our application called PPSafe and we again stored those encrypted files locally into organized place. And we are returning that URI location for our decipher in stream to outstream. Now we have two parameters and the third one will be our cache file that we are able to actually use. And this file is again something that we just delete immediately when we are finished with the application. Users not gonna use those again. So we can delete this, but we need a place to cache and decipher these files. So they are uh, uh, something that app can display. Okay. Let's recap. So we do exactly the same. First, we create the key, secret key spec with our Keegan function. So we have to create the digest for SHA-256, 
we have to get the bytes from our password and then we digest those bytes and we create the key with the digest and we return a secret key spec as an AES algorithm. Good. So now we have the key here. Then we again initiate the cipher, create the IV byte array for that cipher instance, which is Java class. And we create the IV params for that IV. And then we initialize that cipher with those params. Important note that I missed during the cipher. Like I said, this time it will be deciphering. So you have to remember to note, give the cipher instance a knowledge that, hey, we are about to treat, we are now in decrypt mode. As again in our cipher instance function, we have to give a information that now we are in encrypt mode. Otherwise it won't work. I didn't tell you this while we went through the uh, ciphering, but here it is obvious. They are reverse functions, except for this encrypt and decrypt mode, what it should be doing. So important note that I missed. Okay, now we are actually decrypting all content from this URI located encrypted file into this cast local temporary file. So we open the output stream for that cast file and we start decrypting anything that is currently being held in this URI encrypted file location. And while we after we have copied every uh, data from the input stream into output stream, we close the in-stream and out-stream. And if we are success, we return our application, the location of that cached file, which is now available for actual use. And here, when we open this, we just decipher it, and you can see that this is actually called temp media file that's a name i gave it because it can be destroyed and it resides in a cache location nice it's the same when we do downloads we have to go through this except after download we destroy those temp downloaded temporary files and only thing we save are the thumbnails into a safe location which you see in here small images to be displayed fast. And that's about it. That's quite simple when you think about it, to do deciphering and ciphering for file functions. And if you want to ensure that the user feels safe, you might want to consider also a manual clear cache function as in here. So the user may any time delete any content that might reside within the local phone memory. So now it's sealed, done, finished, safe. We'll be back.